Hello, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about some more advanced probability topics here. Um, and we're going to br we'll briefly talk about the concepts and then most of this stuff is, is probably better understood with examples so we'll look at those in our concept videos. All right, but there's there's two main um, kind of more advanced rules here that we want to talk about. The first is our law of total probability. Okay, so we use the law of total probability in a situation where we're we're interested in the probability of an event, which which we may not know, but we know how this event relates to another one. Okay, so so take two events A and B. All right, now uh, a universal truth that we should be able to see here. Okay, just say you know maybe I'm interested in the probability of B. Okay, just a, a truth here would be that the probability of B right, is equal to the probability of B and A occurring plus the probability of B and A not occurring. Okay, so think about that one for a minute, but that's, that's basically just a universal truth. All right, now if we apply the multiplication rule, okay, so, I'm, so each, of these, each of these pieces here, this piece right here and this piece right here, I'm going to apply the multiplication rule to that. All right, so using the multiplication rule, there I get my, my final form of the law of total probability. Okay, so again, remember, it's when maybe I don't know the probability of an event, like here we're interested in event B. Okay, I don't know the probability of B occurring, but I know how B relates to A. Okay, so I can use this truth and the multiplication rule to then get, okay, here's how, given that A happened, what's the probability of B? I also know the probability of A. Or if A doesn't happen, I know the probability of A not happening and how that relates to B. Okay? So that's the idea of the law of total probability. Okay, you can also extend that to more than just two events, A and B. Okay, so say we have events 1 through k, okay, and then another, another key would be here that each of these events are mutually exclusive. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. All right, well, if I still am interested in the probability of, say, event b, all right, so we're still interested in what's the probability of some event occurring, but I don't maybe don't know that much about it, but I know how it relates to another event. Okay, I know how it relates to event 1, event 2, through event k. All right, well, I can say the probability of b is equal to the probability of b and e1, and e2, and e3, and all the way through ek. All right, then again, using the multiplication rule, so this would be the multiplication rule for this piece. This would be the multiplication rule for this piece, and so forth. Okay, I get my law of total probability extended to multiple events. Now I think this picture really helps us see what we're talking about here, how we can picture the law of total probability. So again, remember, we're interested in the probability of B, but we don't know much about B by itself. We just know how it relates to other events. So say, um, so here we have a picture of say K equal to four. All right, we don't know about B by itself, but we know how B relates to event one. We know how B relates to event two, event three, and event four. All right, this shaded area is the intersection of B and each event. So if I put all those intersections together, I should get the total or overall probability of B. All right, so that's the idea of the law of total probability. Again, also sometimes... Uh, sometimes denoted or just um, represented by the, the letters LTP. Okay, so law of total probability is the first one that we want to look at of kind of our more advanced probability rules. The second more advanced probability rule here is Bayes' theorem. Okay, so we know a little bit about conditional probabilities already. A couple things we need to remember here going into Bayes' theorem. So remember that number one, our multiplication rule says, 
Okay, I can write the probability of A intersect B or A and B. Right? According to the multiplication rule, I can write this two different ways. I can write this as probability A given B times probability of B. All right, so that's that's one way to write it. The other way to write it, okay, I can write it like this probability B given A times A. All right, so whatever we're whatever we're given, notice how that corresponds to whatever we're we're multiplying by. Okay, so remember when we when we talked about conditional probability one way I could like say I know if I was interested in probability A given B well I know so here's A given B in this first first way to write this okay so rearranging this part well A given B that would be okay B Here's probability of A intersect B over probability B. Okay, but what if I don't know this intersection? Okay, what if what if I don't know that? Well, then we're kind of caught in a circular loop here. But what can I do? Remember two ways you can write the multiplication rule. We just rearrange the first way. What if I take this second way? Okay, and if I know about A, what if I take this second way and I plug it in here? All right, that's where Bayes' theorem comes in. Okay, so it's basically when we, when we have this in our notes here, we, we use our multiplication rule. We know we can write it a couple different ways. Okay, so an easy way to remember this in my numerator. I just take my conditions, flip them around. All right? My denominator is whatever I'm given. Okay? Lots of times what we'll see is in order to find that denominator, the reason we talked about law of total probability first, is lots of times in order to find that denominator for Bayes' theorem, you may have to use the law of total probability, okay? especially when we're working with, with conditionals. You don't know intersections. All right, so just like we extended the law of total probability to multiple events, we can also extend Bayes' theorem to multiple events. And here's where the law of total probability will really be useful to us. Okay, so again, say we have event one through event k. All right, and you want to know, well, given that event b has occurred, what's the probability of event one? And it could be any event. It doesn't just have to be event one. Here we're just... We're just using event one for demonstration's sake. Okay, so my denominator should be probability of event B. Notice in the in the bottom in the denominator that is the law of total probability for B. Okay, so B will go in the bottom, and then that piece of law of total probability that corresponds to event one, you could think about it like the reversal um, reversal of conditionals in the numerator. All right? Notice this is a piece of our denominator. All right? We use that, so law of total probability of the denominator, right? and your numerator is always one piece or one term of that denominator. Okay, so we'll see in our next video um, applying these concepts in some examples but hopefully you're kind of getting the, the idea the theoretical idea here all right so thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time